One thing that investors are paying close attention to are a couple of things. So we have President Biden speaking in Cleveland this afternoon, focusing on the economic recovery. And we got some uh, pretty important uh, econ data numbers out before the bell this morning. Jobless claims continuing to trend in the right direction, down now four weeks in a row. We also got another reading on first quarter GDP coming in at a at a pace of 6.4%, so largely in line with expectations. We want to bring in Mark Hamrick. He's a senior economic analyst at Bankrate.com. And Mark, when you take a look at the econ data, I guess before today's numbers, it seems to be stalling a bit, yet the labor market seems to be improving when you look at the jobless claims numbers. I guess how encouraging is this report to you and the GDP report when we try to figure out where we are in this economic recovery? Yeah, I think they're broadly encouraging, Shauna. And you think about where we've come over the last year, it's almost stunning. Uh, I think we're all a little stunned after all this. And, and, you know, we had essentially on the headline number an unrevised GDP number, you know, beneath the surface, obviously, uh, some things to look at there. Business capital investment uh, looks a little better. Uh, consumption looks a little better. Uh, and the consensus right now is that uh, the current second quarter will be even stronger than that. And, of course, that all adds up to a strong 2020. And, uh strong tailwinds going into 2022. Obviously, a lot can happen between now and then. Uh, but, you know, we can think about downturns in the past where that 400,000 level on new jobless claims, where we roughly are right now, was often seen as a important psychological level. And if we can break below that and break decisively below it, uh, I think that'll be important. And of course, we're just about a week away from the May employment report as well. So, Mark, given everything that we're getting regarding the data and what we're seeing with the economy, does it undermine the administration's calls for greater spending, whether it be through an infrastructure bill or through the budget proposal that we're going to get? Well, I think that the focus ought to be on sustainable growth over the intermediate and long term. And I think that that is the argument that you connect with some form of, quote unquote, infrastructure spending. Uh, short term stimulus, I, I think that ship has sailed. I don't think you could really make that argument anymore. But absolutely, for the long term, you know, the Federal Reserve still regards long term growth prospects at a fairly you know, unimpressive 1.8 percent on an annual basis. Uh, and if we could lift that a little bit, uh, particularly given the demographic challenges we have, meaning, um, you know, basically not enough young workers uh, and uh, people who are contributing to the economy, basically lining up behind, uh, you know, aging baby boomers and the like. Um, those are things we need to be looking at, as are many uh, major industrialized countries. Hey, Mark, what do you think we'll likely see? Are you expecting the GOP and Democrats to come together to reach a deal? Maybe not this, obviously not the size that President Biden has proposed, but maybe something a little bit larger than what the GOP put forth earlier today? Yeah, I feel like uh, if I were to bet uh, someone else's money right now, <laughs> that I, I, I would bet on something happening. Because essentially, you have at least some Republicans saying, we want something to happen. I think that Joe Biden is not Barack Obama in the sense of uh, he is more willing to compromise. And if they can all basically, you know, walk away from something that's passed to say, you know, we check that box off. That's good. And that's good for the economy. And we can think about the lessons of the past year uh, that indicated that people do need to have broadband access if you lump that into the infrastructure piece, particularly in the communities that are far away from the larger cities and, and rural areas. You know, people basically having a digital divide in a largely digital economy. Uh, that's that's the sort of 21st century edition of infrastructure that it gets lumped in, I think, appropriately with roads, bridges, highways and the like. Mark, should investors who are looking to deploy some of the savings that a lot of people were able to amass over the last year, or should they keep that? Should they use it to buy equities or investments, or should they keep it in the bank for another rainy day? Well, uh, you know, at Bankrate, we try not to be too specific on our investment advice because what we're really trying to do is to help everybody achieve their financial goals, whatever they may be. But I will go back to a survey that we just completed 
basically uh, in the last month that goes back to a lesson that has been, I would say, extracted and affirmed by this experience of the last 14 to 15 month, months. And that is the number one financial regret that Americans uh, told us about. And we surveyed you know, American adults at large is that they wish that they had saved more for emergencies. But the second most important goal that they wish they could also have focused more on is to save for retirement. So those two uh, outcomes are, are quite good outcomes if, if indeed you have cash that's sitting in the bank at a time when inflation seems to be on the rise, uh, where you, one way to combat that is to invest. Uh, so it really depends on one's own personal goals. But you know it's hard to go wrong when you're investing for the long term and saving for the short and intermediate term and the long term as well.